Hello folks. Today we are going to talk about a newly launched feature called as AWS Backup. So long if you have been using an AWS services like EC2 or EBS, then you would be writing some custom Lambda functions if you have started very long back or you might have you've been using the EBS data lifecycle manager also, which was launched about a few months back. But that is only satisfying the problem of EBS snapshots. What if you have an EFS file system, how to take a backup of that EFS file system? Or let us say if you have a DynamoDB table, how to take a backup of the DynamoDB tables? So all of these different services has to be managed separately and their man backup schedules managed separately, the monitoring separately and the retention policy separately. And what if you have some servers in on-premise, then you will have to manage them also separately. So to solve this problem, Amazon recently introduced this AWS backup service. It is a single dashboard for managing all the resources which are supporting the backup APIs. And for now, this is uh, for a particular region and there are certain regions that has been launched and uh, in his blog, Jeff Barr has promised that the new features will be launched and you should be able to do cross-region backups also very soon in the later part of 2019. So let us go ahead and see how you can configure this in your account and reduce the pain points of backups in your accounts. Here I am in the Virginia region and I've just created some uh, sample snapshots and also some sample volumes so that we can test it. So I've also created some tags to see how we can filter for some of those uh, snapshots that you want to take back up and some of them you want to exclude. Likewise, I also have a sample DynamoDB table with one table here. The table name is called as a 2019 January campaign. So how to configure backup for this. So there is a new interface, a new, being a new service, there is a completely new interface Amazon has created and this is how it looks like. Uh, so some of you might be familiar with the backup walls. It is nothing but all your storage goes in there and uh, let us say that is a warm storage and after some period of time you want to move the data to a cold storage to for a lower cost, then you can do that as well. So basically all your storage is backed up by S3, that is your warm storage in your vault and when you move it to your cold storage, then you can move it. What happens is basically the data gets copied over to Glacier and your cost comes down considerably. So the pricing is slightly different depending upon what type of storage you are using or I'm sorry, what type of service that you are using for EBS, the typical storage cost applies for EFS, the storage cost is slightly different. If you're interested in those kind of things, go ahead and check the pricing for AWS backup and how it uh, backup interfaces with EFS and copies the data to your uh, warm and cold storage. So to get started, the first thing that uh, you want to do is uh, create a backup plan or uh, you can also go ahead and create a vault in the beginning because by default Amazon gives you a vault if you don't want to put all your data into your default vault. Let us go ahead and create new backup vault for our apps and we also create another backup vault for our databases. So let us call it app backup vault and here's the KMS key that you want to encrypt your data with so by default Amazon uses the AWS slash backup key yeah if that is not there it will automatically create you it for you once you come to this dashboard or if you have other keys that you want to use to encrypt your data then you can go ahead and click on this drop down and see all the other keys like I see here there's a my shining encryption key and then KMS data key demo you can use any of those keys if you want to encrypt your data for now I'm going to leave it as default and this is for app so i'm just going to add a value as app click on create backup vault so my backup vault has been created for app likewise i can also go ahead and create another backup vault for database also so i'm going to say db backup vault i'm going to call it as db here so we have created two walls so let us go ahead and add a backup plan and it's as simple as go ahead and click on this and let us create a new backup plan from scratch. Let us not use the existing one. I'm just going to build a new one and I'm going to call it app plan. And remember this is a slightly different uh, format. So if you are trying to use some um, hyphens or uh, underscores, it might not work. So just stick to the uh, pattern that is mentioned there. And I'm going to call it as app rule. And what frequency I want to create my backup. I want to create it in every day. So I will leave it as it is. If you want to have a monthly or more frequent backup, like every 12 hours, go ahead and choose that. But in most use cases, a daily should be fine. And the default backup window is something like, uh, it starts at, uh, if you go and click on this, it, it will show that it, 
it starts at 5 a.m. UTC and continues for 8 hours. If you find that time is not convenient, you can go ahead and customize the time as well. So you can go ahead and say, I don't want the backup to happen at uh, 5 a.m. I want the backup to happen at 1 a.m. And you need to provide Amazon about 8 hours of backup window. So that is what the minimum recommended duration is. If you're not happy with it, you just go ahead and say, I want the backup to happen within the next one hour. That is, it starts at 1 o'clock and then uh, you have a duration up to 2 a.m. to have the backup to happen. So this is what I'm talking about, warm storage and cold storage. So if you want to, you to move the data after X number of time, let us say after the 30 days, I want my data to be moved to cold storage. So I'm going to say after creation, I'm just going to say on the 31st day, my data should be moved to cold storage. Should I delete my data after X amount of time? I would say yes, and I would say, after 366 days, that is exactly after one year on the next day after one year, which is going to go ahead and delete my data. And which backup uh, vault I want to use. Remember, we have already created a backup vault and this backup is for an app. So you see here we have app rule and then app plan. So I'm going to put all the data into the app backup vault here. And I'm just going to say this is app backup plan and click on create plan. Likewise, you can go ahead and create a DB backup plan also. Let us go ahead and do that as well. Under backup plans, go ahead and create a backup plan. Build one. So now you can see here, we have two backup plans, one for app and another one for DB also. So, but you notice that when you go here, there are as of now no resources assigned to this backup plan. You can see here my resource assignments are empty. So you need to attach which resources are to be targeted by these plans. So you can do that by using the resource identifier or you can use it by based on tags also. So let us try to see how we can do that. So click on assign resources. So since this being an app plan, we are going to have the resource assignment here. I'm just going to call it as app resources app resource group you can do it any way you want and remember you can choose the default role and if, if the default role is not there amazon will go ahead and create it for you so the first time i'm going to choose it by tag i'm just going to say app 01 and i'm going to add another way this time i'm going to do it by resource id when i do it by resource id you can have only certain list of resources as i said you can have a backup for dynamo db you can have a backup for ebs volumes or efs or uh, you can have uh, RDS databases also or if you have on-premise uh, backups that is happening through storage gateway you can do that also so let us go ahead and because this is an applica uh, application plan I'm going to choose EBS and it is going to list me all the volume IDs uh, here so I'm going to choose this one here and then click on assign resources so once it is successfully assigned you can see here this is the resource group and this is the ARN that is going to take the backup here and then you have the plan here so now we have done a plan for our app or assigned resources for our app plan likewise let us do it for our db plan also i'm going to add assigned resources i'm just going to say db resource group and i'm going to use it by resource id remember i have only one table right now i'm just going to select that one so now we have assigned resources for both our backup plans so what do you mean by protected resources? If there are certain resources that uh, you want to create backup on demand, let us say there is a change and uh, you want to implement it immediately and you want to trigger a backup because you cannot wait until the backup window happens, then you can go ahead and create an on demand backup here. So let's just go ahead and do that. I'm going to say this is my backup window, customize my backup window and I'm just going to say start right now. So since we want it right now, I'm just going to say right now and I don't want this to expire. This is being a demo, just going to leave it as it is and then I'm going to say click on create on demand backup. So you can see here, there's a backup job has been created and the status phase has created. If you want to go ahead and check the status and you can see here there is a status has changed to running and let us give it a minute for it to complete. While waiting for the backup, I have created a couple of other backups. As you can see here, there is a one EBS one I have aborted and I also created another EBS one. So you can go ahead and check each of their status individually. What has happened, what, what time it happened. And if you want to see collectively what happened to all your backups, you can go back to your dashboard and you can see here 
there is a four backup jobs that is happening that is two has been completed another two is in progress and one i have cancelled it myself so if i go to my protected resources you will see the list of the on-demand backups that i've created for example let us go to the uh, a dynamo db backup that i created and in case i want to restore this backup what i have to do is just click on this click on restore and say restored table I'm just going to call it a restore table and then click on restore backup. So this is going to take my request and it is going to process it in the background and is going to restore my table to uh, the from the backup copy. So that is how you manage backups for a multiple resources in a single dashboard, whether it is EBS volumes or EFS or your DynamoDB tables or your RDS databases or some on-premise servers that you have. All in one dashboard, you can create multiple backup walls, encrypt them differently, have different backup plans, target them with the different tag IDs or resource IDs, or have a different rule for different uh, servers. Say app servers will be taking backup at 11 o'clock and database backup will be happening at 10 o'clock. All these kind of customizations are possible in one uh, single console now. All the things that we have done here can also be done through an API call. So if you have some or automation or instrumentation already done then you can go ahead and plug this uh, functionality into your automation and show it in your dashboard saying backup has been happening or failures happened somebody has to look into that so go ahead and try it i really love this new feature i would like to hear more from you guys when you try it out and find out more functionality of this feature put them in the comment section let us learn from each other thanks for watching happy learning